but as I press that, usually a little box jumps up on your screen uh, and you have to click something to get it out of the way. It either says okay or got it or something like that. Yeah. And uh, so do that. And so then you can see the screen. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, there's like a little blue clickable button. Once you click that, the screen gets out of the way. It's just telling you that you're that you're part of a recording. Uh, this is being recorded, and then you can access these later uh, to work on these graphics. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to mute everyone, and of course, if you have questions as we go, you can unmute yourself and ask. So whether it's, uh, you know, today's class, which is more focused on uh, sort of the Tai Chi upper body choreography work, or if it's the balance and gait class that we do on Mondays, we start very similarly because uh, the principles are the same, underlying principles. So uh, I, I turn sideways sometimes in this class and then turn forward and sometimes I'll be at different angles. That's only to be able to show you through the screen <clears throat> um, different sort of uh, depth perception uh, so that you can perceive what's happening. So as I turn sideways here, you just keep facing forward. Scoot to the front edge of your chair. And this right here uh, gets us to work on pelvic floor, uh, the two sits bones connecting down. And also we're developing our Jong Jung or our central upright. So take the time here to, to get that central pillar uh, well aligned. Usually. So, Otto, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, I was interested in, uh, mainly interested in balance. Yeah. I'm wondering if the other class might be more appropriate for me. Well, both of these classes will work on that because we're going to stand up shortly and uh, and you'll see. Gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> so we've got our vertical pillar and, you know, to, to Brooke's question, you know, okay, does this help me with balance? This particular exercise, of course, right? But be facing forward. So you face forward. You don't turn sideways. So when I turn sideways, or at angles, you don't need to do that. I'm doing this to show you this line from the ear to the shoulder, down through the side of the torso, to the hips, down through the chair. That vertical pillar, when we stand up or when we're walking, that, that's the same alignment that we need to have cultivated. So uh, that's what we're, that's being worked on here just in your sitting uh, practice when you do sitting meditation or sitting practice. And then the hands on your thighs, so you've got this central pillar. Now the other very important principle is that usually to keep ourselves up, especially when we're standing to find stability, we grab our body with tension. A lot of times it's here in the shoulders, we hold, we, we grab on thinking that's the way to find stability. The opposite is true. Relax the body. They call this chun wan, softening and relaxing to let everything that's stuck in the body settle down, 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 through the chair, through your legs, through the feet. So it settles down at the bottom, and that's where we get our stability from, is from the correct relationship to the ground. And so relaxation is the only way to actually do that. So any tension in your body is uprooting you from the ground, making you less stable and making you less mobile, less uh, uh, adaptable. So then in with Tai Chi, when we relax the body, we're letting go of all this held tension. And then what's left, they call it Qing Ling or lightness and nimbleness. So if you've seen someone practice Tai Chi, they have a sort of ethereal quality, this floating thing that's going on. And that comes from the fact that they've emptied out all this excess tension and they've 
found this state of ease. One way to think of it is hydraulics. We're now using the liquid system rather than tension and sort of yanking the body around. So that is easier said than done because we have layers and layers and layers of places that are unconscious or injured or tense or whatever. So now our movements that we do help to clear out these places inside the body. But before we do those, breathing, right? So we've achieved vertical pillar. We're, as to best, to best of our ability, relaxing and settling and feeling as light and easy and relaxed as you can. So this is your meditation practice. You could sit and do this, uh, and that's your whole day's practice, right? We add to it. Breathe in through the nose, out the mouth. We're going to do that, let's say, 15 times. Notice there's movement accompanying the breath. Expansion. Relaxation. So this is already joint mobilization. Just breathing correctly, stretching us open from the inside, and then relaxing. The spinal column is getting a little bit of movement. There's a little uh, lift of the shoulder, settle of the shoulder. So there's all this movement that accompanies complete breathing that already is serving our purpose of releasing what is extra in the body. Let's do about five more. Let's add the four-part breathing. So now it's inhale, hold, fold. Hold, keep holding, keep holding, keep holding, then out the mouth. <sighs> Empty, hold, keep holding, keep holding, keep holding, then inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. Inhale. the nervous system. Now, layered on top of that breathing, our first movement. Slide your hands back, elbows back, shoulder blades back, chest up, chin up, look up, arch the back. And then slide your hands forward past your knees, Hollow the chest and drop the head. And again, slide the hands back, elbows back, shoulder blades back, look up, arching all 24 vertebra. And then slide the hands forward, past the knees, drop the head, hollow the chest, open the back. And again, inhaling as you slide hands back and lift the chest. Holding, exhaling, as you slide hands forward, hollow the chest and drop the head. Two more of those. <clears throat>
Now sit up to that vertical line again, neutral, slide left hand forward past the knee, right hand and elbow pull back, turn the shoulders and head to the right, and then switch, coming back through middle, turn shoulders and head to the left, and then switch, turning, and turning. So now we're rotating the rotatable parts. Remember to stay relaxed while doing this. So we're not trying to grab the body with tension and then force it anywhere, right? The essence of Tai Chi is relax and then glide, slide, smooth out any of those places that have become stuck or there's little glue, you know, sort of barnacles through the body. Now come back to middle, settle in the middle, hang the arms loose. Now sideways, just lean a little sideways and back to the middle. Lean sideways, back to the middle. So small is better than big because a lot of times we're we think we have to get to some position, so we cheat or we force it. Again, just a little bit of sideways, a little bit of sideways. Now, <clears throat> balance. Again, the, the, upon first thinking about it, we think, okay, balance, that must mean, or stability, that must mean, you know, holding things together. But balance in action is much more like a tree in a windstorm. Right? It's, it's ability to give, to be pliable, that allows it to remain rooted with the winds of change, with the forces acting upon it. So that's why as we get older and stiffer, that becomes a big problem. Because then we're walking around sort of like, like very limited, and then the smallest little change can send the whole, the whole tree down. And so these practices that we're doing, keep in mind this idea of pliable, adaptable, loosening as your means of more function, more balance, more stability, more adaptability. And then let's come back to the middle. Now, a very important part here. When I say the shoulders, most people think here. They don't think here, but that's where the scapula are, the shoulder blades. They're the most complicated joint in the body, and they hold the most tension, and they cause problems up and down and around, and they make us top-heavy, so we have to clear that out. So shrug shoulders up, slide shoulders down. So this is one of the movements that the shoulders do. Shrug and release. Release all the way down, all the way down. So notice you're probably still kind of holding somewhere like this. Drop them. So the goal here is to shrug up to sort of exhaust all the tension in this area so that you can let go completely and melt them down. Two more. Shrug and melt. Shrug. Now the complicated movement. Shoulder blades squeeze back. They settle to neutral. And then they slide apart. So that's the one that's usually something people don't know how to do. This movement. Shoulders around. Neutral. Back. So now like you're cracking a walnut between your shoulder blades. Squeeze back. Settle to neutral forward or sliding around the outside of the rib cage. Neutral. That's called retraction and protraction. Let's do it one more time. Retract. Feel how that opens all this area. Neutral. And then when you protract, this area hollows and sort of closes a little bit. Now, from this position, lift, go over the top, back, Squeezing shoulders back and slide them down your back and under. So we're now unpacking 
one of the number one areas of the body that make us top heavy and clumsy and they cause head and neck pain, headaches, uh, all kinds of different issues when our shoulders are not cleaned out. Right? Looking at my body, look how much movement I'm getting with this mechanism. And for many of you, you'll find if you were to pay attention, you've got very little of that going. So each round, you want to be getting that area more mobility. Forward, right? Forward, up, back, down. Now, now we reverse that, go back, up, forward, down. Another part that's difficult, the brain. The brain, if you haven't done this much, it's going to have a hard time executing this movement. But as you learn it, then you realize, oh, it's actually pretty natural, pretty easy. Right? Last one here. Boom. All right, so that's shoulder blade, scapula movement. Bend your elbows. Bring your hands up here. Hands are relaxed. Now flare the elbows out to the side. And then this is not where the, the movement ends. We go up as high as you can, but stay relaxed. So now we're cleaning out, clearing out glutes, muscles, Down. Bring your elbows down. Elbows down, you guys. Now bring your elbows in. Can you see me? Hear me? Can you see me? Put a thumbs up if you can hear me and see me. You can't hear me? You can can you see me as well, Janona? Okay, because it looks like you guys are not um moving when I'm moving. Okay. <laughs> Elbows out and up, right? That's one. Now down and in front. Touch them together, right? So notice what happens when you do this. Your back opens up. Down, out, up. Down, around, squeeze. Now elbows. Back, right? Back. Elbows down, forward. Take your hands over your shoulders. That could be your whole posture, but maybe you can do that. Right? So notice, notice, Alex, when my elbow goes up, where does my hand go? Down. It's going down. So it's again, it's this area that's stuck freeing up so that there's movement in that joint. And then forward and down and back. And then down and forward and up. And then forward, down. Now, elbows out. Last one in this little set. Hug yourself. Hug your own body. Brooks, don't get caught like this. Bring that hand under. Yes, good. And hug your own torso, very good. And then elbows straight out to the side. Straight out. Then switch, so the right hand is above, left hand below. Hug your own body. <clears throat> very good. And we're doing one more of those in each cross. Open, switch, cross. And again, open, switch, cross. And final time, open, down, release. Scoot back on your chair. A little bit.
let's just get our legs tuned up before we stand. So lift, okay. load, down. Other leg, load, it's like a spring loading, push away, reload, down. Twice more on each leg. Load, push, load, down. Other leg. <clears throat> load, push, load, down. One more each. So the term freedom of movement, freedom of movement through the entire range, that's the Taoist goal of a healthy body. Straighten this leg. Now freedom of movement of your foot. So point, flex. Point, flex. So a daily practice is you go through, just like you would floss your teeth and try to get every single nook and cranny, we do that with the body. Foot tilts in, out, in. Out, and then we circle in, around, and out. In, around, and out. Circle. <clears throat> And reverse, out, around, and in. And down. Other leg, other foot. Point, flex. Point, flex. Point, flex. Now what's called invert, evert. Circle. You cannot hear me? What's going on? Can you see me? You can hear me now? Oh, when I'm closer, you can hear me. The picture is I, kind of breaking up also. I got you. Uh, let me see my audio settings. So the picture is breaking up, and what else? What's what? What's the other thing that's happening? Oh, so it's freezing. Yes. All right. Let me change my internet thing. So I might, I it might sign me sort of off for a second, and then I'll come back on. I think this other internet might be better. We have two internets. I'm thinking of getting Starlink. If you guys know what Starlink is, it's the thing Elon Musk is doing, uh, which might improve my ability to cast. Am I back yet? Okay, so can you hear me okay? All right. I apologize for this. You know, the uh, it's like on these really rainy days that it it just gets weird. Okay, let's hope. All right, now scoot to the front edge of your chair again. And the last one we'll do with our legs before we stand up. Step a little wider apart. And lift the toes, and you're going to turn on the heel. So notice the shape of my legs. Knees and toes point in. My quad or groin area is closed. The groin area closed. Now, lift the toes, turn open. So the way I'm doing that is rotating the thigh bone, external rotation, and then internal rotation. So it's from up in here. So all of this is changing its position, but it's from here. This is the root. So again, how does this apply to balance and movement? Big time. It really does. That we're finding what they call the qua, this space from which we operate our body effectively. So we can't be stuck here. We have to be open and free and pliable and move. Now, Parallel feet. Now, from the same qua, hinge, bow forward, sit upright. 
lean a little bit back. Notice when I lean back, I'm not arching back. I'm hinging from the pelvis. So it's from the hips. And then fold. Right? Fold as much as you can. Let the back open. And then sit upright. And then lean a little bit back. And sit upright. Fold. Sit upright. Lean back. Okay. So now we've basic tuning of everything. Basic. Now we use that to stand up. So slide your feet back a little. Now watch my body do it first. When I fold from the hips, notice the relationship of my ankles here, my arms, shoulders, and head in front of the ankles, my butt behind, and I go forward first. So now I'm no longer sitting, but I'm balanced, and then just pushing straight down vertical. And when I come up, I'm not grabbing on to my shoulders and arms, right? The idea is stay relaxed, stay loose. Now, when sitting down, hip hinge. Notice I didn't bend my knees. I didn't round my spine. I just folded at the quad. And I keep folding at the quad till I find the chair. And then I'm back. So this is sort of elegant movement. Rather than a bunch of force to try to stand up, Try to stay totally relaxed and just spill your body weight forward out of the chair. So now your weight's down through your feet and then just push down through the ground to stand you vertical, 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 vertical. Come all the way to stand. All the way up. And also... This happens sometimes where we're standing up and we stop like here, right? Because we're a little bit afraid to truly arrive at vertical. So notice my hips truly get to this place here. So find that for yourself. And then to sit down, the first move is this, fold. So let's just do that portion a couple of times. Stand back up, hips come forward, butt goes back, forward, and again, this, this is a big change in the body, but it's not a lot of activity to achieve it. It's actually just very simple right at the quad. Now, once you fold it at the quad, just keep folding, sink so your tush finds the chair, and then Let's do that one more time. Eventually, this just flows where you just go, wee. You relax up. Now, as if you've dropped your glasses or a pen on the floor and you need to get them, a lot of times people stay stiff in the legs and try to go down like this, right? Which is dangerous and very unpleasant versus do it like this, hip hinge sink like you're going to sit in a chair, but don't sit, and get your hands down to your toes, hands down near the floor, and then push through the earth and rise all the way back to stand. So let's see how relaxed you can remain as you hinge and sink, and just go as low as you can. Don't force it, and then rise. So this is called the Tai Chi squat. We're doing the squat not to try to do some sort of fitness, huge strength build, but rather to find ease of movement. And remember that term chun one, or relaxing as our means of finding stability. That's also what we're practicing here, is that you're staying pliable, loose, and then realizing, oh, I can be totally pliable and loose, and totally grounded and stable as well. Sorry, I have a chat from somebody. Okay. So make sure, uh, Brooks, I can't quite see, but it's possible that what you're doing is this. So look at my body. So come all the way to standing. Stand all the way up. 
So it looked like maybe you were doing a lot of that, right? Notice what's different. Look at how much this is what's running the show. The sitting and the rising and the sitting. So do that a couple of times. So it's as if I'm going to sit in a chair. That's how, this is the main area that needs to open for our body that isn't open for people, especially as we age, right? So now stay standing. We're going to go right into some Tai Chi. So this is classic Tai Chi work. Rising hands, floating forward and up. Then this little change. And then like you're painting with the tips of your fingers down and behind. And then again, like you're painting with the back of the hand. And rolls over, and then like you're painting the tips of the fingers. Let's do that one more time. Paint. Now scoop your hands. Open like you're painting the side walls with the back of the hand. The hands change position, and then like your fingertip painting the side walls all the way down to this low crate. And then open. Set. Add to this a little bit of a rise. Straightening the legs a little bit, rising. And then a little bit of a sing. Right? And so we're not squatting, but we are sinking. There's this little bit of a spring in the leg that you're practicing with that movement. Rising. And sink. And wing. Now turn your palms face up. Now just at the elbow joint, Fold. Settle. Release completely. Stay relaxed and just again, almost like levitating the limbs out. So we're using the hydraulics, the liquid, the fluid. Roll, palms up. Then just soft, easy, relaxed fold. And just relax. Complete release so that this one is even more easy, more relaxed, more levitating. Up, roll, roll. Down. And then reversing that are sort of a complementary exercise. Backs of hands touch. Bring the hands up very close to your body. And then roll out, up over the top and out, palms then facing down, and then down. Backs of hands, up, open. As you open, the hands gradually, 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 gradually turn to face, right? Now, scoop, pull the elbows back, turn the hands over, and push. So it's push straight ahead, all the way, full extension, right? I'm reaching all the way to the tips of the fingers, and yet my middle is staying here. So I'm practicing balance and stability and freedom of movement. Turn the hands around, draw. All the way back, 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 back. Turn the hands and push. So the middle stays where it is, but I don't stop here. I keep going, keep going, keep going so that it's like you're pulling on that elastic, that pliable body, and then 
drawing back, all the way back. One more, turn the hands and push, all the way, turn, draw. Now turn just your left hand and push it. Notice as you fully extend left hand, the body rotates. Just don't force the rotation, allow the rotation. Turn that left hand to face, turn the right hand ready for push. Now it's one draw, one push, turning right on that turn style of your middle pivot. And this is a very important place, this middle pivot. So now turn right hand to face the body, left hand ready to push, and from that middle pivot, one draw, one push. So right hand comes back. So Brooks, turn your right hand to face your body. So you're drawing back as this one is palm forward, push. Yes, just like that, good. And full extend, so the body has to turn and then turn left hand to face body, right hand face forward. Get your right hand ready to push. Turn your right hand ready to push. Turn left hand to face your body. Now, one draw back, one push forward, turning the body on the middle pivot, right? So we're turning and turning. And again, turn the hand, turn the hand. So turn your right hand to face your body, left hand to face forward, and then push and draw. One more time, turn the hand, turn the hand, and push and draw. Nice, Ilana, good, good adjustment there. And then back with both, down with both, relax and release. Now we've now located our turning pivot. It's that same place that we change the weight to the right leg change the weight to the left leg. So there's some left to right movement or lateral movement to change to this leg and change to this leg, but we don't want to do too much. That's what a lot of times is happening. We're sort of swinging ourselves way too far, way too far, or in lieu of that, we're not moving at all from here and we're trying to kind of lean the body like this. Versus you can see when I move from the correct place that there's a good alignment that's retained. And so this is an essential piece of how Tai Chi trains us to just move better, to be better balance wise, to have stability and also mobility. So you want to go eventually 100% and 0%. And then from the middle, 100% zero percent. This is the key to being, and I've worked with a lot of people uh, privately in groups as well, but in the private work with the Parkinson's, that sort of stuck gait thing that happens where people can't get going, and the trick that has worked every single time is relax, shift the weight, and pick one leg to be the stable, one is the mover. Now that this is empty, oh, I can step, I can step up a stair. It's when it's empty, it has the power of movement. But most of the time we forget that to empty it, we have to fill the other. So find that quality of full empty discernment. Then let's add to that from the middle pivot. We're going to go into the right leg, turn, and sweep the hands over that leg. Then we're going to go from right leg to left leg, turn from your middle pivot, and let the hands be swept across. And then we go back, shift and turn and brush and sweep. Now let's get precise with the hands. Turn both palms to face that way. Shift, turn, brush knee and sweep. And then turn both hands, shift, Turn, brush, sweep. Turn both hands. Shift, turn, brush, sweep. 
turn both hands, shift, turn, brush, sweep. So as you practice with softness as the power, then what happens is each one is not the same as the last, right? There's a loosening up that should be occurring. So now the hands start to travel in space a little bit. This becomes swirl the stream. So this hand is far away, comes in close. This hand goes far away, comes in close, and then brush knee, swirl the stream. Brush, swirl. Again, there's more loosening in the back and the shoulders. There's more loosening happening. So then that buoyancy for swat the jumping fish. The left hand comes up. We go brush knee, swat the fish. Now stay in your right leg. Left hand drops down into the water. Right arm floats up. So everything's loaded up or like a little wind-up toy. And then we shift from right leg to left leg, turn from the middle pivot, and that executes brush knee, swat the jumping fish, right? So now we're on the other side. Now right hand goes into the water, left arm floats up, and we've got shift and turn and brush and swat all the way to the other side. Make sure you let that right hand go through, Brooks. Make sure the right hand goes through. Nothing gets stuck. Then left hand down, right hand up. Now we're shifting and turning and then letting the hands go through. They go through. They got to go through. And they switch. Right hand down, left hand up. Again, change the weight. Right hand brushing, left hand swap. Now let's go for the higher jumping fish. So it's everything's the same. We just... Pass that lifted hand up higher, just as high as you can, not with force, but just with that sort of floating quality. Brush, swap. All right, and now we're going other way. Brush, swap. One more. Brush, swap. Now, bring your left hand down. Make sure that right hand goes through, Brooks. Right hand goes through. Yeah, you got to let it go through. Don't, don't let it get stuck here. Let it go through. Now, bring your left hand down into the water. Right arm, wing. Now, remember we did that little movement earlier. Roll, fold. So now, this is loaded for a push, right? So... Shift and turn, brush knee, and push. Then they change places. Right hand dips down, left arm wing, roll, fold. Now we're loaded. We're ready. So, Alex, you're doing this. What am I doing? Right? Yeah. So this is not loaded for a push, right? But this is shift and turn, brush knee, push, push, right? And then they change places again. The left hand dips into the water, the right arm wing roll, fold. Now it's loaded, ready for shift, turn, brush. Make sure the brush goes through, Alex. Alex, your bottom hand. Yeah, you're getting stuck here. They move. They got to move. Otherwise, they're stuck, right? And then the right hand down, left hand roll, fold. The deal is I don't start moving my hands. The first thing to happen is change leg, then turn the body like, a, like on a turnstile, and that causes the beginning, but then you got to let those go. Like a fishing line being cast out from a fishing rod, you got to let it fly. And one more, shift and turn and brush and push. Now, bring the hands down, wash your paws, and settle.
Shift your weight to your left leg. Turn your right foot out five degrees. Shift your weight into that right foot and left foot empty. Float the toe out in front. Empty, all right? So empty foot out in front. Then you bring that empty foot back, change the weight to the left leg and put this empty right foot out, touch the floor. Empty, right? So we're going back, out. Bring it back, change the weight, empty foot, touch the floor lightly. So the work is here. The load is here. And this is empty. And then bring that foot back, switch which one has got the weight in it, and then step that foot out empty. Back. Change. Now we add. As your right foot goes out, touches the floor, right fingers point up, left hand is down. Bring the right foot back, nothing changes. Change the weight and bring the right hand down, left hand up. Put the left toes out in front. So that's a little cognitive challenge there. Bring the left foot back. Nothing changes. And then change the weight. Left hand down, right hand up, and right toes touch in front. Bring the right foot back. Nothing changes. Change the weight. Right hand down, left hand up, left foot out. Middle pivot is just the same. So we're getting this movement to occur, all these changing uh, relationships are happening around our middle. So once again, you can get caught up in, oh, there's all this movement happening, but that movement is done in such a way as to find our middle, to help us see, oh, there's a a place, a cockpit in this body that if I'm relaxed, loose, and attentive, I can operate. And watch your paws again. Now, everyone stay in your right leg. Your left hand sweep the leg and vapor and float up and become a cloud. So now we've got Cloud hand, back of hand facing forward. Turn the back of your hand to face forward. There you go, Brooks. Good. Your right hand is dipped into the lake here. So now shift into your left leg. Turn from your middle pivot. Cloud comes across the sky. Lake sweeping across. Then the lake vapors up as the cloud rains down. Now it's shift, turn from your middle pivot, cloud, lake, vapor. So Brooks, you forgot your lake hand. Your left hand has to come through too, all the way through. So then it can go up as the cloud hand rains down. And now it's shift to the left, turn, cloud, and lake. And then vapor and rain. Shift and turn. Cloud, lake. Remember the lake hand. Don't let it stay behind. Get it to go through. There you go. And then they change places. Shift and turn. Cloud, lake. Rain, vapor. Shift and turn. Cloud. Drop that right hand, right hand, there you go, shift and turn, All right, so the cognitive challenge just doing, this is simple Tai Chi, what they call Tai Chi Tao, or Tai Chi calisthenics, or Tai Chi repetitive exercises, whereas learning a whole Tai Chi form gets very complicated and we're stepping and walking and moving and all of that. But here we're getting all the essential infrastructural activities. I'm not just standing frozen and let's say doing something with my hands, right? 
I'm shifting, I'm turning, I'm floating this way, and then I'm shifting, I'm turning, I'm floating back across that way, and then changing, and then shifting, and turning, right? And then hands come down, wash, wash, and set. Now we're gonna do another standing balancing pose. So put the weight into your right leg, turn your left foot out five degrees, 10 degrees. Change your weight, and remember in the first one we did, we did a toe touch in front. Now do a heel touch in front. So it looks like this from the side. That, so the heel is touching, the weight is still in this leg. So let's just do the leg part. Step back, change your weight, put the heel out in front. Step back with no body weight, shift, heel. Alternate angle so you can see. Step back, change, heel. Empty, okay? Step back. Change, heel. Step back, change, heel. And now, no, no worries about the, the legs. Now just keep your legs centered and let's do the arms. So extend your right arm forward, straight ahead. Tai Chi straight, meaning it's straight, but it's not locked. I'm not stiff. It's relaxed. Think of it like your garden hose. When you turn on the garden hose and it fills with water, it's straight, but it's not like straight, straight. It's just, it's got that integrity. So straight. And then this hand, bring it up like so. So it's got this little bend. So this is called play guitar, right? Because when we play a guitar, one hand is down here, one hand is here, right? So there's that relationship between the hands. So find this hand position here. And then switch. Switch. Play guitar on the other side. So if I turn sideways, you see this relationship. This hand could touch the elbow, but it's not, uh, Ilana, I'm not coming across and touching the elbow. It's just at that, that level in space, right? And then switch. And then switch. And switch. Now, down and up, forward, back, get to that position. <clears throat> so this is our destination. Now the far hand goes down, the close hand goes up, and then they kind of ride like a wheel and get to this position, play guitar. And then ride the wheel. Play guitar. Ride the wheel. So one is far away, one is close. They're going to change jobs. Change. Change. Reverse the wheel. So now the high hand, uh, the forehand goes high, the other hand goes low, and we're still arriving at the same destination. Circle, arrive. All right, so make sure you hit this place. Circle, arrive. Circle, arrive. And so Ilana, you're doing something, you're like doing this and then doing something like this. Look at, look at what I'm doing. Yeah, it's just right in front. So I'm turning sideways, you can see here or here, here, okay? Now, go back to this first variation. Again, drop your arms for a moment. Turn your left foot out five degrees, change your weight into that leg, and put your right heel out in front. So, this. Now, whichever leg is in front, 
That's the long arm. And then this other hand is here. Now, bring your front foot back, change the weight, and change the hands. Put your left foot out, heel touching. Bring the empty foot back, nothing changes. Shift the weight, everything changes. Bring the foot back, change the weight, Change the hands. Play guitar. Bring the foot back. Change. Bring the foot back. Change. And again, this is difficult, right? But this is far simpler than what Tai Chi asks of us as we advance in the practice. So what I'm doing here is a simplified variation to get the brain and body to understand how to coordinate opposite movements, asymmetrical movements. So just focus on just the simple bits that I'm giving. I'm sort of giving foundational experiences for your brain and body. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see it. Bring the foot back, change, change the hands. So the, the arm that's long, that's the foot that's out. Then that foot comes back, and then as I shift and change, other one. Bring the foot back, change. Bring the foot back. Change. And then just as a final challenge, we can do the wheel. So bring the foot back. Wheel. Bring the foot back. Change the weight. Wheel. And you can do the over-under wheel or the under-over wheel. Doesn't matter. They still end up at the same place. Bring the foot back. Wheel. <clears throat> Play guitar. Bring the foot back. Over, under. Bring the foot. Over, under. Wheel. Now reverse whatever the wheel you were doing. Do the other. One full, three empty. Change, which one is full, which one is empty. Change, full, empty. Change, full, <coughs> empty. Change, and again, middle. So all this, don't be distracted by all of this. Find that middle. The organizing middle. And hands down. And we finish with what's called Sink Chi Wash Organs. <laughs> Tip a little bit back into your heels, just a little. Open and lift. Then tip a little bit into your toes. Sweep the hands around and out in front, so they're out here. Then tip into the heels, bringing hands back, and then down, and then remember your squat that we did earlier. Hips back a little, sink the booty, and soften the arms long. Let the arms hang. Stand back up, pause here. And we do that again. Rock to the heels, open and lift. Rock to the toes, sweep around. Rock to the heels, bring the hands in and down as you settle to the middle of your feet. 
And then that little squat, hips back, sink, and release. So this is like if you had some tangles in your hair and you had to comb them out. That's what this movement does. So that's why we usually start and finish practice with this movement. It just goes through the basic mechanisms, basic chi pathways, and clears them. And then we finish the whole practice with wing, roll, fold, set up. <clears throat> Turn the hands to face the belly, and then one hand over belly, other hand over that hand, and what's called wuji. So the term taiji basically means duality, yin and yang, up and down, forward, back, out and in, all of that. Wuji means no activity. It's the state before the big bang of taiji. So standing and doing nothing at all for me. Just zero. Nasal breathing, natural. And the idea is that to the degree that you can quiet the mind, quiet the emotional turbulence, quiet the nervous system turbulence, to the degree that you can allow that to settle, that's the degree to which the chi or the energy returns to the battery and charges and stores like a reservoir, right? So as soon as we start thinking, we're drawing our, our funds out of our bank. As soon as we start worrying, we're drawing the funds out of our bank. And so this Kung Fu technique of zero, empty, drop it all. And that's both clearing but it's also storing and charging. All right, everybody, thank you so much. The little hand mudra, grab, fold. Have a good weekend. Try to stay warm and dry. If there are any questions or thoughts, uh, musings, epiphanies, whatever, uh, feel free to unmute.